Hello, today we are going to be taking a look at solving quadratic equations and some of the basics that are important regarding quadratic equations. On the screen here, I've put a couple different examples of quadratic equations so you could take a look at different types of quadratic equations and different ways that they will be expressed. To begin, let's start with what is a quadratic equation. When given different equations, in order to tell whether it's a quadratic equation or a different type of equation, we want to take a look at the exponents. When you are dealing with a quadratic equation, your exponent's highest value will be 2. So when you're looking at the different variables, in this case we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 12 equals 29. I want to look at the variables and see what the exponents are raised to. In order to do this, it helps to list them in order from, least to, or from greatest to least, and then take a look and see what they are. So in this case, squared is going to be my highest variable with an exponent on it. So this would be an example of a quadratic equation. Perfect squares and square roots are two topics that go with quadratic equations. When you're looking at a square root, you have a couple different vocabulary words that you want to make sure you understand. You have your radical sign, which is going to be right here, and then the number that is under the radical is going to be called your radicand. That's going to be the number that we are taking the square root of. When you're dealing with perfect squares and square roots, it's important to understand that they are inverses of each other. This means that they are opposites. So if you ever hear the word inverse, just remember that that means opposite. When raising a number to the second power, we will usually refer to that as squaring it. So that would be when you're taking it and you're multiplying it by itself. So if I have 5 squared, that would be 5 times 5. Down here, I put the little formula equation that goes with this. If a squared equals b, then a is going to equal plus and minus the square root of b. In order to get just a from a squared, what we ended up doing was square rooting it. So we would take the square root of this side, and whenever we do that to one side, we then have to do it to the other. So we would do the square root of b, which is where this comes in right here. And whenever you do the square root, it's important to put plus and minus in front of it. Because if you do the square root of 25, for example, well, the square root of 25 is going to then equal, let's put this up here, positive 5, and it's also going to equal negative 5. So it's going to be those two values, because if I take those numbers and multiply them by themselves, they should give me 25. So 5 times 5 is going to give me 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 will also give me 25. So when you're looking at this formula down here, that's why we put plus and minus in front of the square root of b. So let's take a look at a few examples. I put a few numbers up here and let's take a look and see which of these are perfect squares. So in order to determine that, I am going to take the square root of each of these values. So I'm going to put my radical sign up. So we're going to do the square root of 25, the square root of 144, and the square root of 90. So the square root of 25, we just took a look at that one on the last page. The square root of 25, I want to then determine what number when I multiply it by itself is going to give me 25. So if I do the square root of 25, I am going to get positive 5, and I'm also going to have negative 5. Now you also have tools on your calculators that will help you with this. There's a square root button that you can click. So you would type 25 and then square root, or sometimes you'll type the square root symbol and then do 25, and it will tell you 5. Um, usually it won't put the negative in there, so it's just important that you remember to put the negative 1 in as well. Now if I do 144, again, you can utilize your calculator. It helps to have some of the basics memorized, and you probably do from experience in other math courses. So if I was to do the square root of 144, I am going to get negative 12 and positive 12. And again, don't forget to include the negative one in there. And square root of 90. So if I was to do the square root of 90 in my calculator, I am going to come out with a decimal 
it's not going to be a nice whole number. It's not going to be an integer. So I get up something that looks like this. And it continues. Since this does not come out to an integer, I am going to then have to not count this as a perfect square because it doesn't have something that I can just multiply it by itself that doesn't include a decimal. So I would say that 90 is not a perfect square. So out of these examples, 25 and 144 would be our perfect squares. Now let's take a look at a word problem involving square roots. If the area of the square classroom is 289 square feet, what would be the dimensions of the classroom? So let's take a look at this classroom. So we have a square, pretend these sides are equal. We're trying to figure out the dimensions of it. So one thing that we need to take into consideration is when we're dealing with a square, what's the formula that we use for that? So you've probably seen it a couple different ways. Sometimes you'll see it's side squared. Some people will see it as length times width. However you've been taught to go through that. The important thing to recognize with a square is that all of the sides are going to be equal. So I'm going to put little congruent marks here. Okay, all of these sides are congruent to each other. So if I was trying to figure out what they're equal to, length times width, those are going to be the same values. So instead of labeling them as L and W, and again, I've seen this done with S's for sides, however you want to label it, let's call this side X and this side X, because I don't know the value of those sides, but I do know that they should be the same. Right? All of the sides on this should equal X then. So when I'm finding the area of this square classroom, length times width, width is going to be x times x. So I'm going to have x times x equals whatever the area is, which we know is 289 square feet. Let's put our little multiplication symbol right here. Now with your properties of exponents, if you do x times x, that is going to equal x squared which is going to now bring us into a quadratic equation. So I have x squared equals 289. Now our goal is to find what the dimensions of the classroom are. So if I have x squared equals 289, in order to figure out just x, I am going to need to square root both sides of this equation. So I am going to have to do the square root of x squared and also the square root of 289. So let's draw my radical signs. Now I'm going to have x equals plus and minus whatever the square root of 289 is. So if I do the square root of 289, I am going to get 17. So I would have a positive 17, and I would also have negative 17 as my possibilities. Again, if I do 17 times 17, that is going to give me 289. And if I do negative 17 times negative 17, that will also give me 289. Now the important thing with this problem is when we're talking about the dimensions of a classroom, we cannot have negative values. So even though 17 and negative 17 are both possible solutions, the only one that is going to work for this particular problem is positive 17. So x equals 17 is the only one that will work. So the answer to this question would be 17, and then we really want to be careful with our units here. So when we're doing area, the units are in square units, so we had square feet. When talking about just the dimensions of the classroom, each side is going to be in feet. So the dimensions of this classroom would be that each side is 17 feet long. So 17 feet for each side length of our classroom. So the length and the width will all be 17 feet. Now let's take a look at a couple other problems involving square roots. We're solving y squared equals 64 for the first one. So again, the minute I see the square, I see the exponent is 2. I know I'm dealing with a quadratic equation. I'm going to square both sides, just like we did on our previous problem. And I'm going to then type in my calculator. Hopefully you know this one by memory. I'm going to type in my calculator and pull up my answer. And I am going to find that y 
equals positive and negative 8. And there's no restrictions on this one because I'm not getting into dimensions or things like that. Another problem we have here takes a look at involving fractions. So I'm going to do this the same way I would do the other problems. I see m squared. I see it's raised to the second power. So I square root the m squared. I also then need to square root the other side. Now when you do this, you can think of this as taking right, it's over here, 81 over 9. And what we're doing when we square root this fraction is we're square rooting the top and we're also square rooting the bottom. It's another way to think about this when you go through it. So if I do m squared, I'm just going to have m. When I'm dealing with this fraction, the square root of 81 is going to give me 9. And again, it could be positive and it could be negative. And then on the bottom of my fraction, the square root of 9 is going to be a positive or a negative 3. So I would get 9 over 3 here. And then I would do 9 divided by 3. I can simplify that a little bit further. Well, 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. And then since I had plus and minus for both of these, I want to make sure I have a positive 3 and a negative 3 for my possibilities. Because at this point here, both of these could have been plus and minus for the top, plus and minus for the bottom. Right? We had a plus and minus there. So I have m equals 3 and negative 3. And I change the variables around on this so that you see it's not always going to be x. So I'll change that around sometimes. I'm going to box this one out. Now the last one I want to take a look at is x squared equals negative 49. So again, I've got my quadratic equation. I'm going to square root both sides. So the square root of x squared is going to be x. Now, when I go to do the square root of negative 49, this is not going to work. It's actually going to involve imaginary numbers, which we're not going to work with at this point. So if you were to type in negative 49 and do the square root in your calculator, it's probably going to tell you error. You have to remember with these, you're doing the square root of something, and then you should be able to take the answer and multiply it by itself to get what you had started with. There is nothing that I can multiply by itself to give me a negative number. Because if I do a negative times a negative, it's a positive, and if I do a positive times a positive, it's a positive. So in this case, there is no solution to this. This is going to get into imaginary numbers, and I'm not going to be able to find an answer for this. So we would not be able to reduce this any further. I hope that this helped you to better understand quadratic equations. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how square roots and perfect squares apply. Thank you very much.